How can we design a microservices architecture using DDD? Are there other options? Let's discover it in the next few minutes. Whether we are designing a new system or trying to decompose a monolith, the main challenges in a microservices architecture are decomposing the system into services with well-defined responsibilities and establishing how data is exchanged and kept consistent across such services. A proper microservice architecture design defines microservices which are loosely coupled and highly cohesive. Low coupling means that microservices are as independent as possible. In an ideal scenario, a microservice should be able to perform its duties without depending on other microservices. High cohesion means that each microservice is responsible for functions that are strongly related with each other. What we are trying to avoid is building a distributed monolith. This is a system where services depend on each other, thus cannot be developed or operated independently. These systems are pointless as they pay the cost of microservices without getting any benefit from it. For instance, a distributed monolith is not elastic. If we experience a spike of requests to microservice A, but this microservice is highly coupled with B and C, we will be forced to increase the number of replicas for all the three services. Now that we know goals and risks associated with our design, the question is how we decompose our system into services. That's where domain-driven design comes into picture. The first step is to elicit requirements and create a map of our domain. That's the domain model. In the early stages of our design, we need to keep the model lean. There is no need to create a detailed class diagram. We need to be able to iterate quickly through different options and ideas. It's important to contrast and compare. We can define major entities, constraints, and most importantly, their associations. Associations are key to identify potential boundaries. These boundaries could represent aggregates or, most importantly, a bounded contest. These are areas of the domain that exhibit high cohesion within the boundary and low coupling with the other contexts. Those are exactly the properties of a well-defined microservice architecture. We have derived a very important concept. A microservice is equivalent to a bounded context in domain-driven design. Now that we have identified our microservices, we can split the work, involve other architects or other teams, so that they will add more details to their subdomain. The next challenge is defining how data is exchanged between microservices, and most importantly, how it's kept consistent. Despite all our efforts to isolate subdomains, there will always be some relationship between services, which we can see clearly in the domain contest map. An order contains data from multiple domains, like the product catalog, the client's account, and the logistics. Since each microservice manages its own independent database, we cannot leverage foreign keys to map these relationships. So, how can we combine data from multiple domains? And most importantly, how can we keep it consistent? That's where things get complicated. One approach is what we already see on screen. We link the different subdomains through the identifiers of their entities. As we learn from DDD, the identity is constant for the entire life cycle of an entity. Thus, it's a low maintenance relationship. Once we link an order to a package through their identifiers, we will never have to update the relationship because the IDs never change. If we included the package status right within the order, we would be forced to synchronize the data between the logistics service and the order service anytime we have a status update. However, an end user wants to visualize all the data when it's seeing an order. How can we reconstruct it? If all we are doing is aggregating data and no business logic, we can expose separate APIs for each subdomain and shift the aggregation responsibility on the clients. 
We can optimize this approach by introducing an API gateway that aggregates the data for the clients. This way we deal with the complexity of aggregation only once. Another common approach is to have a microservice communicate with other services over RESTful APIs or RPC. However, this approach increases coupling between services and creates explicit dependencies. The resiliency of the order service is dependent on the resiliency of the logistics service, thus we are forced to implement retries, circuit breakers and other complicated patterns. From an implementation perspective, if we want to update the logistics interface, we need to do it in a backward compatible way, otherwise we are forced to update the logistics and order services at the same time. This is when our system quickly turns into a distributed monolith, because a lot of coordination is needed between the different subdomains and the teams that maintain them. That said, it's not always possible to aggregate data in the higher layers of our system. There are scenarios where to implement a business rule we need data from another domain, and we cannot leak business logic in the presentation layer. In these scenarios, we can use events and materialize views. In this scenario, data is replicated asynchronously over events. Any microservice interested in a particular event can subscribe to a topic and keep a materialized view of the portion of data that is of interest in the particular subdomain. The logistics service can generate an event when a package is delivered. The order service can mark the order as completed, while the notification service could send an email to inform the user. Event-driven system minimizes the coupling between the different services. However, we pay the price in terms of observability and data duplication. The system are also more difficult to implement and less intuitive, even for architects. That said, can we combine events with the DD? That's a question for another video. If you want me to cover the argument, leave me a comment in the section below. In the meantime, if you want to know more about microservices or DDD, watch one of these videos. If you enjoy the content, like and subscribe, and see you next time.